You've got ideas, you've got ambition, you've got no time, or so you think. I'm Marissa Lonick, and I help busy moms with big dreams and no time. Join me each week as I dive into time management strategies, goal setting and achieving framework, and inspiring guests who are juggling mom life, work life, fill in the blank life. Dreams don't work unless you do, and just because you're a mom doesn't mean you can't still make it happen, whatever it means to you. Welcome to the Mama Work It podcast. Hello, mama friends, and welcome back to another amazing episode of the Mama Work It podcast. I'm so excited you're here. And I know, I know firsthand what it takes for you to take time out of your overwhelmed, busy AF mom life, even just to listen to this. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing that and for being here and for just being part of the Mama Work It fam. So for those of you who are new around here, my name's Marissa Lonick. I am your host. I am the founder of Mama Work It, where we support women in the juggle, the juggle of mom life, work life, wife life, fill in the blank life. And today's episode, we are talking about time management for the overwhelmed mom. Now, I know you're probably like, what mom is not overwhelmed, Marissa? And I get it. Moms, we wear a lot of hats. There's a lot to juggle. It is overwhelming. And time management feels like this thing that we try and we try and we try and we cannot get a handle on because as soon as we plan, what happens? Something else happens. It goes wrong. It doesn't go as planned. And it starts to feel kind of starts to feel kind of not worth it sometimes. It starts to feel kind of exhausting or stressful. And we feel all these things. We feel overstimulated. We feel frazzled. We feel frustrated. Maybe we even feel resentful, like other people can manage their time, but I'm just not good at it. Unhappy, unfulfilled, all the things. And that results with each and every day finally laying down and feeling defeated, feeling like the day ran you, not you ran the day. And so what do we do? What do we do as moms when we feel this way? We're exhausted. We end the day. We were so busy all day long, and yet we didn't get done what we wanted to get done. And so instead of closing our eyes and forgiving ourselves and giving ourselves grace and going to sleep because we're freaking tired, we numb out. We distract ourselves. We scroll mindlessly for 45 minutes, an hour, two hours, even though we should probably just be sleeping and trying to do better the next day. And then when we do that, we end up waking up and we're kind of unmotivated, right? We wake up feeling kind of stressed out. We carry that energy throughout the next day. And this is sort of this vicious cycle that happens. Uh, Even though we feel like, again, we're so busy all the time, we're pulled in a million different directions, we don't actually feel like we're making progress into the place we want to be. And the reason why is, and this may be an unpopular opinion, you guys, but the reason why a big part of this is, is because we don't even know where we're going. We don't even know where we want to end up. And I say that with so much love. And I say that with so much understanding because I've been there. I think we've all felt this way at some point where we feel kind of stuck. We feel like we're doing all the things, but we're not getting any further. We're not moving in any direction we want to go. And a big part of that has to do with clarity. So before I dive into any of this content more in depth, I want to remind you that if what you hear today is really resonating, if you feel like you got a huge takeaway, a huge aha moment, or even a small one, I'm going to encourage you to check out the time management four week program. Okay. Because a lot of what I'm going to tell you today, I teach in more depth in that program. So right now, 
in case you didn't know, right now in this month of February, and we've got a few days left when this episode airs, that program is actually on a flash sale. You can save $500, which is actually more than 50% of what the cost of this program is. For this month of February, you've got eight days left. Yes, we've got a leap year, leap year. Lucky you, you get an extra day to use this promo. Link is in the show notes. Promo code is save dollar sign 500. And it's a four week thing. In four weeks, literally in a month from today, you could feel much less overwhelmed, much more empowered when it comes to managing your time, your tasks, your goals, your sanity. So if this speaks to you, hop on the time management four-week program bandwagon. We'd love to see you there. All right. So let's dive into this. I'm going to teach this in three simple steps, okay, because I'm a certified coach and what I want you to do is I want you when this episode is over to not just say like, oh, that was good. Those are some good, you know, good ideas and then not implement anything. I want you to actually move forward and I want you to take one, two, maybe three of these steps I'm going to teach you because they're really simple and really small and not a big deal. And I want you to apply them into your life because the purpose of this show is to help you grow, help you learn, help you develop yourself as a mom, as a professional, as a woman, as a human. So I'm going to teach you three super simple steps. But before I teach you those, I want to tell you this, okay? Another unpopular opinion. I'm full of them today, as you can tell. And it's this. When you feel overwhelmed and you know what that feeling feels like, right? You feel stuck. You get analysis paralysis, like you're looking at all the things you have to do on this list, or they're just shuffling all around your head and you're feeling so confused and unsure of what to do. When this feeling hits you, and it can feel really overwhelming, honestly, like that's the word that comes to mind. Like feeling overwhelmed can even be overwhelming in itself. It can feel like it's controlling you. I want you to remember this. And my girl, Marie Forleo says this. If you don't know who Marie Forleo is, she is a badass mentor, entrepreneur, coach, author, businesswoman. She's pretty cool. Go follow her. She says this, and this has stuck with me for years, and it's something I remind myself of of when I'm feeling overwhelmed. It's overwhelm is a choice. Simple as that. It is a choice you're making in that moment. Whew. I know that hits hard because you're like, well, no, it's not. I don't want to feel overwhelmed, but actually nobody wants to feel overwhelmed. Like, let's get that out of the way. But actually... The good thing about hearing that is that if and when the next time you feel overwhelmed, if you remember this, that it is a choice you're making, well, you have the power to make a different choice. You have the power to choose something else. You're like, oh shit, I'm feeling overwhelmed right now. Well, I don't want to feel that. What do I want to feel? Let's move into this space. Happiness, joy, excitement, motivation, empowerment. Fill in the feel right there. So I want you to bear that in mind. It is a choice you're making. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, and I know that's a little bit of tough love, and I know it's much easier said than done, but really, if you can take that and you can remind yourself of it, when you get those sensations, those body feelings, those mind feelings, that you know, heart racing, whatever overwhelm looks like for you, Remind yourself of that and choose something else. All right, so let's dive into our three tips now, the three simple steps you're going to take when it comes to time management if you're feeling overwhelmed after you've already changed the feeling, okay? So first step here is about your mindset, your mindset. Did you know that your mindset has up to 95% impact on your success. Up to 95%, you guys. That means all the planners, all the organizational systems, all the strategies, all the checklists, like all this, the things you're doing to manage your time, the tangible tasks, they're important. 
but they only account for five to like 20%, depending on what study you look at. Okay. So this is not a one size fits all kind of thing. This is not a one sided kind of thing. Time management is not about just the organizational pieces. It is a combination of these things with how you are thinking, talking, feeling about it in your brain. So the first thing I want to teach you when it comes to your mindset around your time is we've got to get away from this scarcity mindset when it comes to time in general. Most of us have this mindset when it comes to time, okay? It's it's not your fault. It's kind of like just what we're surrounded with, what society says about time, how we feel as humans in general about things. We tend to kind of gravitate toward this space of, of scarcity and negativity because we're trying to keep everything safe and compartmentalized and understandable. And we sort of have this love-hate relationship with our time, right? We feel like time goes too fast when we're having fun. We feel like time goes too slow when we wish a situation was already over with and done with. We feel like there's never enough time. I don't have time. You probably say that all the time. I know I have been guilty of saying this ad nauseum in different seasons of my life. I don't have time for that. Who has time for that? There's no time. There's so little time. There's never enough time. Whatever way you tend to speak about time or think about it, if it is in this scarcity mindset, we've got to make a shift for you. Because if you're in this scarcity mindset when it comes to your time, no matter what system you implement, no matter what course you take, no matter what beautiful planner you order, no matter what whiteboard calendar you have in your kitchen, no matter what Google calendar you've implemented, it doesn't matter what strategies you're using. If your mindset is in the scarcity place, you're not going to feel and be successful at managing your time and you're going to stay in a state of overwhelm. So how do you shift this? Here's a really simple solution, okay? The next time you find yourself in a space, whether that's in your thoughts, whether that's in the words you're speaking aloud, whether that is in just how you're feeling about your time in general, the overwhelm, whatever it is, I want you to stop and rephrase what you're saying. Okay. So if you say, I don't have time, I want you to catch yourself and I want you to say, I always have time for what's important to me. If you say, oh, there's never enough time. I want you to stop and rephrase this. There's enough time for what I want to get done today. This is one I hear a lot. If you say, time is a thief. Time is a thief. And I know there's not necessarily like a a negative connotation when you say that. You're kind of just trying to say time flies in a different way. But what you're saying is like, time's something that I don't strive to want to be like. I don't strive to be around. Who wants to be around a thief? wants to be around someone who's breaking the law. But you could say something more like, time's always on my side. Time's got my back. I got plenty of time. So I want you to really shift this mindset of scarcity around your time to one of abundance around your time. I want you to take those, those thoughts, those sayings, those things that you're believing about time, and I want you to shift them to the opposite. Because the thoughts that we have, this mindset, affects how we feel, which affects our actions, which affects our results. So if we think we don't have time and we feel like time is scarce, our actions will follow. We won't say yes to that invitation. We won't go to the gym. We won't do the thing that we actually want to do because we'll feel like we can't, our time is not there for us in order to make it happen, and our results will follow. Our results will follow. We won't fill our cups getting together with girlfriends. We won't get healthier and make that goal that we have regarding our our weight loss or our energy levels or our half marathon we want to run or whatever it is. 
and we won't make it happen. And we're using this time clutch as an excuse to not get there. And I'm telling you, it is as simple as a mindset reframe in order to make it happen. So that is small step number one, simple step number one. If you are feeling overwhelmed, you have to start with the mindset. Okay, simple step number two. If you are feeling overwhelmed, like you have this enormous mental load that is so heavy to carry around every day and it's just swirling and things are moving around in your brain over and over and over and it feels like it's hoarder status in this like studio apartment up there and you just need to clear the clutter and get some organization going on here and figure out what the hell you even want to do, you need to do a brain dump. You need to do a brain dump, girlfriend. So what's a brain dump? Literally, you're going to dump all the contents that are swirling around your brain onto a piece of paper, onto the notes app on your phone, onto an Excel sheet, onto whatever you have access to and that you feel is the best option for you. It doesn't really matter. What matters is you're getting it out of your head and you're getting it onto a third party resource. Okay. I would recommend if this feels intimidating to you. If you're like, I don't, I don't even know where to start with this brain dump, set a timer on your phone, whatever feels okay, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I don't know, three minutes and get the pen and paper, or whatever device you're going to use and just let it like turn on the faucet and let it flow. Let all the things flow. Don't try and organize it. Don't try and put it in categories. Don't try and only think of things for the school and not the home or for work and not parenting or vice versa. Just get it all out as it comes to you. It might flow even quicker than you're able to write it down or type it out, but get it out. Reason being, we're, it's really hard to get clarity when your system, quote unquote, is your brain. Your brain's a really smart thing. I'm not knocking the brain. No shade for the brain, okay? But it needs some help. It needs some resources. You need some resources in order to get some clarity, get some vision, get some organization here to make it happen. So getting clarity is a really important, simple step here because even just this one exercise of brain dumping, and you won't stop there. That's not your to-do list. That's not what you're going to work off of. I'll give you some tips on how to manage that in a second. But even just the simple step of getting it out of the head and onto a paper, a spreadsheet, a notes app, fill in the blank, is going to help you substantially because it's going to diminish that feeling of overwhelm, that feeling of out of controlness. Is that a word? I don't know. I just made it one and allow you to see things more clearly. Now, from that brain dump, you're going to look at it and guess what? You may, again, feel the feelings of overwhelm come upon you. But you've already got some good tips in here of how to scoot those to the side, right? We know we get to make that choice. And another way that you can combat this overwhelm in that moment is you can take a look at this And I know there's going to be tons and tons of stuff on here. Like maybe this is going to be more than one page. Maybe this is, you're going to look at this and be like, holy shit, how do I even start? Where do I start? What do I do? And you might even feel like, I don't even want to look at this anymore and push it to the side and want to like numb out and do something else. Stop, stop right there. This is your next step. You're going to take a different color pen or a highlighter or something that's just really going to attract your eye and you are going to pick three things on that list, only three. And by the way, they need to be small. They need to be small things. They can't be like major accomplishments that you want to do in one step, one swoop, if they have multiple smaller steps within them. Okay. So like, let's say one of your goals and dreams is like, I want to start a business. Well, that's not one of the things on your list. That's a huge thing that you need to break down into several smaller goals from there. Okay. So you're going to pick three small things. These can 
have to do with anything and everything. They can be home related. They can be parenting related. They can be work related. They can be passion related. They can be self-care related. They can be connection related, relationship related. It doesn't matter if they're swirling around here, they're there. They're on the paper. Okay. So we're going to pick three small goals from there. And we are going to highlight or circle or make those pop out and stand out so that when we get our free pockets of time at some point during the day, which we all get them, we all get the free pockets of time, no matter how busy you think you are, when you get those, you're going to zoom in and have laser focus. You're not going to look at the whole list and get decision fatigue and feel overwhelmed and just push it to the side. No, you have laser focus. You know exactly what you're going to do. It's a small task, so it's not going to feel daunting to you. And you're going to freaking get it done. Boom. That's it. All right. Then you're going to rinse and repeat the next day. You don't have to do the brain dump the next day. You're going to rinse and repeat on picking the three things. Okay? So that is simple step number two. Okay. Simple step number three for the overwhelmed mom when it comes to your time management has to do with the multitask. The multitask. So every time I give talks or presentations where we talk about multitasking, I always ask the question to the audience, hey, who in here multitasks? And inevitably, I'll get about, at a minimum, 90% of people will raise their hand. Some will shoot it right up. Others will kind of more shyly put their hand up and admit to multitasking like it's this terrible thing that they do. But the truth is, most moms multitask. And hey, guess what? There's no shame in the multitasking game. But I am going to teach you something with regards to multitasking that is my mantra that is going to help you multitask more effectively, aka multitask without the overwhelm, without the feeling frazzled, without the stress, without the making mistakes and having things take 10 times longer, without the 25 things that you've started that are not finished, that now are making you feel even more overwhelmed. So it's this. Write this down if you can, if it's safe to do so. Otherwise, come back and listen again and write it down then. You multitask the mindless You solo task the mindful. You multitask the mindless. You solo task the mindful. What does this even mean? Well, when I think of mindless tasks, these are the things that I can do on autopilot that are super simple, that don't require all my brain power or even a lot of brain power, that if I messed up would not be the end of the world. These are things when I think about it like, chores at home, like laundry, preparing lunches, cooking dinner, washing dishes, even things like working out in some capacity, like not all workouts, but some workouts, like if you're just walking on your treadmill or walking or running around your neighborhood, something like that. And what do you multitask these things with? Well, here's the best part. I would encourage you to multitask these things with things that bring you more joy. Okay. If you're someone who enjoys folding laundry and you want to be all in during those moments, girlfriend, do you. But for me, folding laundry is not that fun. It doesn't bring me a ton of joy. So I like to pair it with something that does bring me joy, whether that means catching up with a friend on the phone, whether that means listening to an awesome podcast like this one, whether that means listening to an audio book. I listen to a lot of my books these days rather than actually read them. And that's okay. This is the season I'm in and I'm all here for it. It gets me to read more. It strengthens my brain. I learn new things. I am interested in stories I'm reading. It's fun for me. So bringing in activities that maybe I've told myself in the past, I don't have time to do that. And multitasking them with things that I can pretty much do on autopilot is a win. It's like multitasking without the stressful part. Now, on the other hand, I'm talking solo task. When I say solo task, the mindful, 
These are things you want to be fully present for, fully engaged. You do need your full brain power for these things. You, If you did make a mistake, it would cost you extra time or extra money or your reputation or something like that. I'm thinking of like a reply all when I say that. So, you know, a reply all that shouldn't be a reply all. You know what I'm talking about. So friends, these are the things you have to draw a line in the sand. You have to be totally all in for, okay? You have to compartmentalize. Don't try and check emails and do things on your phone when you want to be all in on a conversation with your partner or you want to be totally engaged in playing with your kids. Don't um, be thinking about 17 other things when you're sitting down and having dinner with your family or when you're working on one creative work project. You shouldn't be thinking about 15 other things that have to get done right? Solo task the mindful. You'll actually get these things done more quickly. You'll have a laser focus. You'll get a much better result. And you won't feel all those yucky feelings that we talked about before of feeling frazzled and stressed and overwhelmed. So those are our three simple steps today that we're talking about when it comes to time management for the overwhelmed mom. I'm going to quickly repeat them for you. Simple step number one was all about your mindset and shifting that from a scarcity to an abundance mindset when it comes to your time. Simple step number two was all about getting clarity, and you can do that by doing that brain dump exercise and then honing in on the three small goals a day. And simple step number three was about the multitask, multitasking the mindless and solo tasking the mindful and really just drawing a line and being able to choose wisely what gets multitasked and what doesn't. So that is that, friends. That is today's episode. I want to remind you one more time, because like I said, just eight days left in this amazing flash sale, that if you want to hop on the time management train and join us, I want you to get that discount, okay? Save Save dollar sign 500 is the promo. It is going to be in today's show notes. Do not miss it. If any of what I said today is resonating with you, if you want to hear even more of this, if you want to learn even more in depth time management, time management strategies for moms, busy moms, overwhelmed moms, go from overwhelmed to empowered, please do not miss this sale. Okay, this is going, this program is not only about managing your time, it is about managing your energy, it is about achieving your goals, it is about doing a whole, a whole revamp of how you're looking at your time and your resources and motherhood. Guys, not trying to toot my own horn, but it's freaking life changing. So if it sounds like something you need, you want in your life right now, get on board. Time management right now, save 500, over 50% off. Grab it while you can. Eight days left. Thank you again for listening. Super, super humbled, happy, excited, grateful you were here. Thank you. I appreciate you. I can't wait to see you on the next episode. And until then, keep on working it, mama. Bye. You've been listening to the Mama Work It podcast. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and would love if you could take a quick minute to leave me a review on whichever platform you're listening from and maybe even send a note to a fellow mama friend recommending it. Reviews and recs help this podcast grow and reach more like-minded, awesome moms. And if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click that button so we can stay in touch, girl. By the way, If you haven't checked out the Mama Work It website, please do. There are lots of free resources and great articles there that can help you with the juggle of work life, mom life, wife life, fill in the blank life. So head on over. Thanks again for being part of the tribe. I'll see you soon, but in the meantime, keep on working it, mama.